I swear, I can't think of a single scene in Kara no Kyokai where she's not smoking or lighting a cigarette. Oh, I mean... It's impressive. Toko <laughs> walked through her hometown for the first time in four years, grumbling to herself. Your family's not from Misaki. You're from that tiny town outside of it, up on the hill. I guess that's just considered That's like an hour away by train. Oh, was it that far? Yeah. Huh. Like, you're not from Mizaki, what the hell? Must be considered a suburb of here, so she's still used to it. She was on an aimless and careless stroll. No familiar escorted her. And she'd even left her self-defense bag back at the hideout. Why is that in quotes? Self-defense bag. Today, she was in full tourist mode, not nervous about a thing. Huh. What if, what if you just run into Aoko? Yeah. Like, what if suddenly Aoko? Wouldn't that ruin your entire plan? I mean, possibly. Back town overseas. This was Toko's second time going back home. <coughs> After leaving the Aozaki home four years ago, she'd secretly returned to Misaki. The first time was longer ago. Yeah. When Toko was 14 years old, she studied abroad in an academy in England. Right. She'd spent two years there before returning to Japan. Then she'd enrolled in a local high school named uh, Ray and Girls Academy, yeah. where Alice went, goes, and headed back to England three years later after graduating. That was four years ago. 14 in England, Just a second. two years, 16. Back here, Ray and Girls Academy, three years to 19, four years, she's 23. Oh, okay. Okay. And Aoko is 17, so that puts her at six years older than Aoko. Oh, I thought so. Uh, Rayan is also the school, uh, a school that shows up in Karano Kyokai, where Fujino goes to. So if you have her in Fate Go. That would be why yeah, Alice's school uniform looked kind of familiar. Yeah. <laughs> now she felt the same as she did then, when she returned to that English country town where she'd lived for two years. Tabishi? Hmm... He rounded her shoulders and fell deep into thought. Toko felt a tingle run up her spine that couldn't really be described in words. Times were changing faster than ever. Everything was relatively inexpensive and could be replaced on a whim. After thinking to herself for a bit, she cracked her knuckles and set forth. There was no use overthinking any of this. Yeah. This was just how things were now. That's all there was to it. It was only natural for the old to make way for the new. Huh? I mean, listen, you say that, but like, if you can get some of those like old fridges from like the, the 50s and the 60s, ah, yeah. those things still work fucking perfectly. Yeah. They're serviceable by, like, a normal human if you happen to have the, the operations man manual. And spare and, parts are a little harder to come by. Uh, but... Yeah, but, like... You don't it, need them as often. Right, because yeah. they were meant to last literally forever. Right. right. You can do this, Toko. This sudden spark of self-enlightenment gave Toko the encouragement she needed, and she set off with high spirits towards the train station. Striding down the boulevard, she exuded the confidence of a supermodel or dictator. <laughs> I like how we're comparing those two things. Although she wasn't about to exclaim, My conquest begins with Main Street! Time to tear it up! <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a combination of a dictator and a delinquent. Where's the supermodel in that? Her enthusiasm was, of course, still there. Toko, however, had something she had to accomplish first. Before she could give thought to putting an end to this town's thoughtless uh, attempts at modernization uh, that would become outdated in just a few years. <laughs> Period. Okay. That wasn't a sentence. That was a fragment. What was the rest of that sentence? Alright, well, whatever. 
Toko's first destination was not one of Misaki's protective sigils, but rather her old favorite pachinko parlor. <laughs> Though the area around the train station had undergone a dramatic makeover, the back streets were mostly unchanged. Toko had exchanged 5,000 yen for some little silver pachinko balls before going upstairs and sitting at the machine she determined was paying out the most that day. <laughs> She sounded slightly disappointed, but her lips and posture betrayed her good humor. Pachinko parlors were a staple form of entertainment in Japan, but they were largely absent in other countries. High stakes gamers criticized it as inefficient, time consuming, too luck dependent, unrewarding, and so forth. Basically, a child's game. Hmm. When Toko was studying abroad, she didn't see anything that even resembled a pachinko parlor. However, she wasn't here playing pachinko because she was feeling nostalgic for it after five years. She needed some money? She simply needed a war chest. Yep. <clears throat> Why didn't you just buy the helicopter in Europe then? I don't think she could transport it, I guess. It flies. Well, Japan she would notice just... stuff entering their airspace. So you'd have to shoot. Use them. magic to fix it! Yeah, maybe. Well, now she's broke, and Bayo is expensive, of course. Toko had chartered a helicopter to airlift three shipping containers full of materials to remodel the old school building into a workshop. There weren't any roads a truck could take to get to the old school out deep in the mountains, so she'd been forced to burn through the last of her savings. Oh, well, you didn't buy a helicopter. You rented one. Uh, you hired one. Her smile remained in spite of her complaints. There was nothing more Toko-esque than her sitting cross-legged in this pachinko parlor, one hand on the machine, with the other holding a cheap cigarette. <laughs> oh, yep. Hmm? Toko noticed something out of the corner of her eye and put on her glasses to see better. She glanced over toward the odd sound she heard and saw a pale-faced parlor employee. He had a baby face and looked like he was still in high school. Because he was. Well, yeah. Upon seeing Toko, he froze for a moment, and then ran off. <laughs> yep. Or rather, he fled in a panic. Oh. A little bit. You, you instinctively reminded him of Alko, so, <laughs> yeah. so he ran. <laughs> Mage though she was, Toko was still in the prime of her youth. She's only 23. Yeah. Oh, God. It's I know. Scary. <laughs> Though she didn't like it when guys ogled her or tried to strike up a conversation, she thought a boy running full tilt away from her was a bit much. It's just a little. Toko made a mental note to scare the crap out of that kid the next time she saw him and yeah. returned to her game. <clears throat> With her winning tickets in hand, Toko left the pachinko parlor. She'd won quite a bit, but it was hard for her to feel good about it after what had happened at the end of her session. Wondering what it, what that had been about, she looped around the back of the parlor to redeem her winnings for cash. Oh yeah, Toko san ja nai desu ka? Oh, found someone you know. She stopped on her tracks, frozen by a familiar voice she hadn't heard in four years. Bayo's ears perked up as he woke from his slumber. It was just before sunset. He opened his eyes with a big yawn, sniffing at a familiar scent in the air getting closer. Well, I'm gonna be human again. Easier to eat a cheeseburger when you're human, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Bayo jumped down to the floor and transformed back into his human form. Though he and Toko didn't have a strict master-servant relationship, he felt he should at least go and greet her since he was supposed to be watching over the place in her absence. Bayo's face scrunched into a perplexed frown as they met in the hallway. He sensed something more to the smell he'd been so used to. 
真面目にお留守番していたお土産。Did Toko get laid before she came back? Is that, is that the implication? No, I think she just found a guy that she、uh, might be able to buy something from. Toko handed the paper bag she was holding to Bayo. Bayo was happy to get his hands on the bag stuffed full of hamburgers, but he tilted his head at the lingering odd scent. どうしたの浮かない顔して。留守中何かあったいや、思わず寝ちゃうぐらい何もなかったけど。トーコさんの方こそ何かあったなんか元気ないし、妙に疲れてるし。何より、ちゃんと僕の好きなお店のハンバーガー買ってきてるし。Wait, didn't you ask for hamburgers? 別に何もなかったけど。This was all extremely suspicious. <laughs> One of the major red flags for Bayo was Toko's usual complete lack of interest in food. Toko thought that a hamburger was the same no matter where you ate one, so she had often just stopped at wherever was closest. Thus, Toko would only stop at a certain Asian burger chain, still rare in Japan, maybe 1% of the time. Not to mention. これは私なりのベオ君への感謝の気持ち今までいろいろ連れ回したけどこれからもよろしくね She had a sickly sweet smile on her face If any of the puppets she'd let loose in Misaki heard what she was saying right now they'd probably fall into a logic error loop and self-destruct <laughs> Toko was not one to ever consider the rights of her familiars ムサン臭い芝居臭い真っ向臭い<laughs> wow. Damn. I think she just thought she was doing the right thing. I think she just thought she was doing the right thing. I think she just thought she was doing the right thing. I think she just thought she was doing the right thing. I think she just thought she was doing the right thing. I think she just thought she was d o i She's wearing her, her glasses. Beo. Hora, your name is Niko Kyoni Kaitekitano. Beo Kundate, Satoni Kaitara, Jotogura, Hoto Surdeso. No, all I did there was slap and avoid everybody. Soreto Naji. What does that the Homo Shikuni Naru Tedo no Kawai Rasta Arun des? Suko Uso, Skiga Namida or Nagasura Uso. Toko made a grab for the paper bag, but Bayo dodged and jumped out the window. <laughs> He dexterously kicked off against the wall and scampered up onto the roof of the old school building. Yeah, I'm、so、not sure that's how physics works, but okay. Well, he doesn't need to pay attention to physics. <laughs> He pulled out a hamburger from the paper bag and took a big bite out of it. That said, though her attitude had seemed like an act to Bayo, it was true that Toko was in an unusually good mood. It was unclear why that was the case, but Toko seemed to be feeling something special, or at least something she hadn't ever shown Bayo before. Mm. Bayo couldn't understand what exactly that feeling was. He only knew basic feelings such as like and dislike, delicious or disgusting. Those are not feelings. He wasn't able to articulate much further than that yet. Bayo continued to eat through his hamburgers, still not completely satisfied with the day's course of events. The truth was, even if Bayo didn't care enough to understand it, he was still a little upset that there was something he didn't know. <laughs> a few days passed. Unbeknownst to the people of Misaki, progress was being made on the remodeling of the old school building. Meanwhile, Bayo was bored out of his mind, knowing he had to be stuck here for at least another month. He could feel both his body and his mind dulling as he spent his days simply lounging around eating meat. On the other hand, Wow, you're happy again. 
お土産のローストビーフ行ってきます屋上の機材片付けておいてねただいま今日もお留守番ご苦労様よし行ってくるでござるお疲れお酒臭いああ<笑>酔ってなんかないですもう全然酔ってなんかないもん This is what Toko had become <laughs> The mage was constantly out and always in a good mood in stark contrast to Bayo who spent his days doing nothing <laughs> Evidently she was happy with how her workshop was becoming more and more fortified by the day Somehow it's still working もう絶対違うそんなんで Toko さんの機嫌は良くなんないしここに関しちゃぐちぐち不満ばっかりこぼしてるし何よりござるとかバカっぽいこと言わないしんどうしたのベオ君すっごくブサイクな顔してるけどあそろそろ暴れたくて仕方がないそういう問題じゃありませんまあそりゃ早く本命とやらと戦ってみたいけどもうちょっと先なんでしょなら我慢する。トウコさんの言葉は今のところ外れないから、おとなしく従います。けど、けど、なんか変。いつも下準備の時はこれぐらい暇だけど、緊張感がない。毎日食べて寝て食べて寝てじゃ太る。ブクブクに太るよ。そんなのかっこよくないよ。<笑>てるんだかベオ君にそんな心配は無用でしょ排泄もしないくせにまともな生き物ぶってるんじゃありませんうんだから主にトウコさんがブクブクに<笑>ベオ君それ本当数値は変わってないはずだけどなんかこうアストラル的に増えちゃったりしてる、uh... This is what Beo was talking about. Toko knew the accuracy of Beo's eye and trusted his discerning vision over even the numbers on her scale. Normally, Toko would just remove her glasses and say something like. t o t o t s d a g a t o k o h e k i no yo yo seo kakuni s t a k u n a t a Ah, ah, ah. Ah, yeah. He can wa ki de nai. Sa, Beo, kono kubia o tsukete miro. Omo i kiri hai ni toberzo. But she hadn't done anything of the sort, and it was beyond weird for her. 